you very much. Uh, so I'm Dominic Halliwell. I'm a PhD research student in the University of Bath in the Life Sciences Department. My research project focuses on this direct sequencing of cytosine modification states using nanopore long read data. Before I begin, I'd just like to also say that Oxford Nanopore Technologies, uh, I'm very grateful, partly fund my research as my case studentship partner. So without their invaluable support, this wouldn't be possible. Um, most of my research, um, the research I'll be presenting today will look at the, uh, some background on the epigenetic modifications that I study. I'll talk you through some of my aims and objectives, and then I'll show you some of the things that I've been finding using my Oxford nanopore sequencing experiments. I'll talk you through some new things that we've been doing using nanopore sequence data to learn more about uh, epigenetic modifications of cytosine. The epigenetic modification I study for the most part is DNA methylation, which is this very widespread phenomenon across eukaryotic DNA, and it's particularly abundant in mammalian genomes. Uh, my main area of study is 5-methylcytosine and 5-hydroxymethylcytosine, these two modification states shown on the left. 5-methylcytosine um, is a very widely characterized modification state, as many of you already know. It's known to be largely transcriptionally repressive. 5-HMC uh, has a number of different putative roles, so it's a bit harder to characterize, um, but that's what makes it so exciting to learn more about. These two next states, 5-formalcytosine and carboxylcytosine, less well-known still, they're largely considered transient intermediate products as part of this demethylation pipeline, where modified C goes back to being unmodified. So this enables the genome to have a great degree of flexibility. You can have a uh, cytosine, methylcytosine, hydroxymethylcytosine, and back again. This pathway is incredibly important for human development, uh, health, aging, and tissue differentiation. Uh, but its dysregulation, of course, is known to be involved in a lot of human diseases. Uh, that's why, as the aims of my research project goes, I look to uh, validate the use of nanopore sequencing to uh, detect these modifications in DNA. I'm, I'm, and I'm also looking for new ways to use this data to learn more about them. Uh, the way that I've gone about doing this for the most part is by making uh, comparisons to orthologous sequencing techniques. I've been looking at oxidative bisulfite sequencing and tet-assisted bisulfite sequencing, so that's OxBS and TabSeq for 5MC and 5HMC detection, respectively. Genome-wide, I'm finding that across both the nanopore and uh, OxBS seq datasets, 5MC is a very abundant modification. Almost two-thirds of all CPG context uh, cytosine base calls are 5-methylcytosine, whereas 5-HMC is a lot more rare, a bit harder to detect. Only around 1 in 10 CPG context base calls are 5-HMC, and that's both for the nanopore and this TabSeq dataset. At shared chromosomal positions between these data, we find there's very little deviation between what the nanopore is saying and what the orthologous technique is saying, and only a very small proportion of sites actually report large differences. Um, so we're finding that at a base level, we have strong similarities that are consistent with orthologous techniques. I wanted to expand this comparison a bit further and look at larger transcriptional features. So what I did was I grouped these individual CPG context calls across promoters, introns, exons, whole genes, etc. You can see from these box plots on the left that 5MC and 5HMC are both very context sensitive in terms of enrichment and depletion. So it goes down in some places, up in others. Um, what I was interested to look at was whether or not this would actually align at the level of shared features, uh, such that we would see 5HMC in this case enrichment in both the nanopore data and the uh, benchmark technique. And that's indeed what we found. We found significant correlations across all the transcriptional features that we covered. In other words, a gene body with a lot of 5-HMC in one sequencing technique is going to be likewise in the other. So I found that uh, uh, the data say very similar things all in all. We've been able to validate the use of this for detecting 5-HMC in this case. We wanted to then find out what else could we do with the nanopore sequence data that we couldn't do in those previous techniques. We've done something a bit different, uh, so a very um, a widespread technique in 5-HMC study is called HMEDIP, and this is an immunoprecipitation-based technique where 5-HMC enriched fragments of DNA are pulled down by an antibody, PCR amplified, and then sequenced. We did that uh, using our nanopore minion uh, sequencer, 
except what we did was we omitted the PCR amplification step. We directly sequenced the pull down product. And the reason we did what, that was because PCR will actually uh, eliminate those DNA modifications. 5MC and 5HMC are not carried over by the polymerase. We can see the effect of this uh, on these bar plots on the left with the fact that 5-HMC now makes up a significantly higher proportion of the, um, all of these CPG context base calls than it did in the earlier whole genome data. In other words, we've shown that we have enriched the sequence uh, library for 5-HMC with this pull down, and we can directly see this. This was sequencing basically nanogram outputs of this pull down product, so it was, it was quite impressive for the day. On the right, what we did was we applied a standard bioinformatic technique for HMEDIP, uh, peak calling. So peak calling, you look for spikes in coverage that uh, are situated at sites where the antibody has bound most strongly. Uh, what we found was that all of these sequence, or the vast majority of these uh, peaks that we called from this nanopore HMEDIP data actually overlapped with regions that we already found to be enriched for 5-HMC using whole genome sequencing. So we can also internally validate the fact that these five, uh, our whole genome sequencing with the nanopore sequence data is picking up these 5-HMC enriched positions. <laughs> the next thing we did was playing around with something that nanopore have been talking about a lot recently, and that's duplex uh, base calling. So with duplex base calls, you have a paired, um, you've got paired read level data such that now we can actually see at an individual CPG site, both the forward and reverse cytosine positions. So most of the CPG sites across the genome are characterized by this symmetrical modification. So you see constitutively unmodified or methylated sites. Uh, in the IGV image I've shown here, this is actually the differentially methylated region of an imprinted gene, and I've separated those two um, alleles based on methylated or unmethylated. In the top, you can see that most of these on the left, you can see the um, forward C modification, and on the right, you can see the reverse C modification. So you can see that most of the methylated allele are made up of constitutively methylated CPG sites, and most of the unmethylated allele are made up of constitutively unmethylated sites. It goes a bit deeper now, but we can also detect 5-HMC in the same sequence data set. This is one of the rare examples on a methylated allele where you have a constitutively hydroxymethylated CPG position. So it's both the forward is 5-HMC and the reverse. But what's really cool is that we can also see these, what we're calling heteromodified CPG positions, where you have two different modification states present on uh, opposing sides of the CPG dyad. This actually turns out to be the majority state in which most 5-HMC is found. Uh, in my particular data set, 5-HMC um, containing duplex base calls heteromodified positions like these made up over 72% of those reads. Why are we doing this? Well, one of the things that we can look at with this is actually where um, symmetrical and asymmetrical patterns of CPG modification might have some biological relevance. Um, of recent uh, import has been the effect that this symmetrical or asymmetrical strand modification patterns has on transcription factor binding. We've been looking at CTCF in particular, and that's a, an important architectural protein. So it's how the DNA organizes its uh, chromatin conformationally. And what I've been doing is I've been looking at where CTCF chip seek peaks overlap with our duplex base cores and trying to find patterns in the um, CPG dyad states that, we, that overlap them. This is still very early days, uh, so I'd need more time and data for this one. Uh, but this is new research that is made possible by the fact that we can do this uh, sequencing technique and also see all of these modifications within a single convenient data set. Uh, with that, I would like to thank all the people that have been involved in this research, my lab group especially, and Oxford Nanopore Technologies themselves for having me, for being an invaluable supporter, and thank you all for your attention. <laughs>